Chapter 9 Ground Reference Maneuvers Introduction Ground Reference Maneuvers and their related factors are used in developing a high degree of pilot skill. Although most of these maneuvers are not performed in normal everyday FL Ying, the elements and principles involved are applicable to performance of the customary pilot operations. The maneuvers aid the pilot in analyzing the effect of wind and other forces acting on the aircraft and in developing a fine control touch, coordination, and the division of attention necessary for accurate and safe maneuvering of the aircraft. The early part of a pilot's training is conducted at relatively high altitudes for the purpose of developing technique, knowledge of maneuvers, coordination feel, and the handling of the aircraft in general. This training requires that most of the pilot's attention be given to the actual handling of the aircraft, the results of control pressures on the action, and attitude of the aircraft. As soon as the pilot shows proficiency in the fundamental maneuvers, it is necessary that he or she be introduced to ground reference maneuvers requiring attention beyond practical application and current knowledge base. It should be stressed that during ground reference maneuvers, it is equally important that previously learned basic FL Ying technique be maintained. The FL Eid instructor should not allow any relaxation of the student's previous standard of technique simply because a new factor is added. This requirement should be maintained throughout the student's progress from maneuver to maneuver. Each new maneuver should embody some advanced knowledge and include principles of the preceding maneuver in order to maintain continuity. Each new skill introduced should build on one already learned so that orderly, consistent progress can be made. Maneuvering by reference to ground objects Ground track or ground reference maneuvers are performed at relatively low altitudes while applying wind drift correction is needed to follow a predetermined track or path over the ground. These maneuvers are designed to develop the ability to control the aircraft and to recognize and correct for the effect of wind, while dividing attention among other matters. This requires planning ahead of the aircraft, Maintaining orientation in relation to ground objects, FL Ying appropriate headings to follow a desired ground track, and being cognizant of other air traffic see in the immediate vicinity. Ground reference maneuvers should be FL owned at an altitude of approximately 500 to 1000 feet above ground level AGL. The actual altitude will depend on the ability to reach a safe landing area if there is an engine failure during the maneuver and the type of air in which the maneuvers are being FL owned. If there is significant vertical movement of the air, Higher altitudes should be used to avoid the possibility of FL Ying below 400 feet AGL, the minimum altitude recommended in the practical test standards, TTS. Overall, the following factors should be considered in determining the appropriate altitudes for ground reference maneuvers. The speed with relation to the ground should not be so apparent that events happen too rapidly. The radius of the turn and the path of the aircraft over the ground should be easily noted and changes planned and affected as circumstances require. Drift should be easily discernible but should not overtax the student in making corrections. Objects on the ground should appear in their proportion and size. The altitude should be low enough to render any gain or loss apparent to the student, but not recommended lower than 400 feet above the highest obstruction and in no case lower than 500 feet above any person, vessel, vehicle, or structure. During these maneuvers, both the instructor and the student should be alert for available force landing files. The area chosen should be away from communities, livestock, or groups of people to prevent becoming an annoyance or hazard. Due to the altitudes at which these maneuvers are performed, there is little time available to search for a suitable field for landing in the event the need arises. Drift and ground track control Whenever an object is free from the ground, it is affected by the medium surrounding it. This means that a free object moves in whatever direction and speed that the medium moves. For example, if a powerboat were crossing a still river, the boat could head directly to a point on the opposite shore and travel on a straight course to that point without drifting. However, if the river were FL owing swiftly, the water current would require consideration. That is, as the boat progresses forward on its own power, it must also move upstream at the same rate the river is moving it downstream. This is accomplished by angling the boat upstream sufficiently to counteract the downstream FL owl. If this is done, the boat follows the desired track across the river from the departure point directly to the intended destination point. If the boat is not headed sufficiently upstream, it would drift with the current and run aground at some point downstream on the opposite bank. Figure 9-1, as soon as an aircraft becomes airborne, it is free of ground friction. Its path is then affected by the air mass in which it is FL Ying, therefore, the aircraft, like the boat, does not always track along the ground in the exact direction that it is headed. When FL Ying with the longitudinal axis of the aircraft aligned with the road, it may be noted that the aircraft gets closer to or farther from the road without any turn having been initiated by the pilot. This would indicate that the air mass is moving sideward in relation to the aircraft. Since the aircraft is FL Ying. 
Within this moving body of air wind, it moves or drifts with the air in the same direction and speed, just like the boat moved with the river current. When FL Ying straight and level and following a selected ground track, the preferred method of correcting for wind drift is to head the aircraft, wind correction angle, suffice silently into the wind to cause the aircraft to move forward into the wind at the same rate the wind is moving it sideways. Depending on the wind velocity, this may require a large wind correction angle or one of only a few degrees. This wind correction angle is also commonly known as the crab angle. When the drift has been neutralized, the aircraft follows the desired ground track. To understand the need for drift correction during FLI, consider at FLI with a wind velocity of 20 knots from the left and 90 degrees to the direction the aircraft is headed. After one hour, the body of air in which the aircraft is FL Ying has moved 20 nautical miles, nm to the right. Since the aircraft is moving with this body of air, it too has drifted 20 nautical miles to the right. In relation to the air, the aircraft moved forward, but in relation to the ground, it moved forward as well as 20 nautical miles to the right. There are times when the pilot needs to correct for drift while in a turn. Figure 9 2. Throughout the turn, the wind is acting on the aircraft from constantly changing angles. The relative wind angle and speed govern the time it takes for the aircraft to progress through any part of a turn. This is due to the constantly changing ground speed. When the aircraft is headed into the wind, the ground speed is decreased. When headed downwind, the ground speed is increased. Through the crosswind portion of a turn, the aircraft must be turned sufficiently into the wind to counteract drift. To follow a desired circular ground track, the wind correction angle must be varied in a timely manner because of the varying ground speed as the turn progresses. The faster the ground speed, the faster the wind correction angle must be established, the slower the ground speed, the slower the wind correction angle may be established. It can be seen then that the steepest bank and fastest rate of turn should be made on the downwind portion of the turn and the shallowest bank and slowest rate of turn on the upwind portion. The principles and techniques of varying the angle of bank to change the rate of turn and wind correction angle for controlling wind drift during a turn are the same for all ground track maneuvers involving changes in direction of FLI. When there is no wind, it should be simple to FLY along a ground track with an arc of exactly 180 degrees and a constant radius because the FLI path and ground track would be identical. This can be demonstrated by approaching a road at a 90 degrees angle and, when directly over the road, rolling into a medium bank turn. Then, maintaining the same angle of bank throughout the 180 degrees of turn. Figure 9 2. To complete the turn, the rollout should be started at a point where the wings become level as the aircraft again reaches the road at a 90 degrees angle and is directly over the road just as the turn is completed. This would be possible only if there are absolutely no wind, and if the angle of bank and the rate of turn remained constant throughout the entire maneuver. If the turn were made with a constant angle of bank and a wind blowing directly across the road, it would result in a constant radius turn through the air. However, the wind effects would cause the ground track to be distorted from a constant radius turn or semicircular path. The greater the wind velocity, the greater the difference between the desired ground track and the FLI path. To counteract this drift, the FLI path can be controlled by the pilot in such a manner as to neutralize the effect of the wind and cause the ground track to be a constant radius semicircle. The effects of wind during turns can be demonstrated after selecting a road, railroad, or other ground reference that forms a straight line parallel to the wind. Fly into the wind directly over and along the line and then make a turn with a constant medium angle of bank for 360 degrees of turn. Figure 9-3, the aircraft returns to a point directly over the line but slightly downwind from the starting point, the amount depending on the wind velocity and the time required to complete the turn. The path over the ground is an elongated circle although in reference to the air it is a perfect circle. Straight FLI during the upwind segment after completion of the turn is necessary to bring the aircraft back to the starting position. A similar 360 degrees turn may be started at a specific C point over the reference line, with the aircraft headed directly downwind. In this demonstration, the effect of wind during the constant bank turn drifts the aircraft to a point where the line is re-intercepted, but the 360 degrees turn is completed at a point downwind from the starting point. Another reference line which lies directly crosswind may be selected and the same procedure repeated. If wind drift is not corrected, the aircraft is headed in the original direction at the completion of the 360 degrees turn, but has drifted away from the line a distance dependent on the amount of wind. From these demonstrations, it can be seen where and why it is necessary to increase or decrease the angle of bank and the rate of turn to achieve a desired track over the ground. The principles and techniques involved can be practiced and evaluated by the performance of the ground track maneuvers discussed in this chapter. Rectangular course normally, 
The Phi RST ground reference maneuver introduced to the pilot is the rectangular course. Reference figure 9 4 throughout this rectangular course section. The rectangular course is a training maneuver in which the ground track of the aircraft is equidistant from all sides of a selected rectangular area on the ground. The maneuver simulates the conditions encountered in an airport traffic sea pattern. While performing the maneuver, the altitude and airspeed should be held constant. The maneuver assists the student pilot in perfecting practical application of the turn. Division of attention between the FLI path, ground objects, and the handling of the aircraft. Timing of the start of a turn so that the turn is fully established at a defi night point over the ground. Timing of the recovery from a turn so that a defi night ground track is maintained. Establishing a ground track and determining the appropriate crab angle. As for other ground track maneuvers, one of the objectives is to develop division of attention between the FLI path and ground references while controlling the aircraft and watching for other aircraft in the vicinity. Another objective is to develop recognition of drift toward or away from a line parallel to the intended ground track. This is helpful in recognizing drift toward or away from an airport runway during the various legs of the airport traffic sea pattern. For this maneuver, a square or a rectangular phi eld, bound on four sides by section lines or roads that are approximately one half mile in length, should be selected away from other air traffic sea. The aircraft should be FL owned parallel to and at a uniform distance just to the outside of the phi eld boundaries not quite above the boundary so that the FL light path may be easily observed from either seat by looking out the side of the aircraft. The closer the track of the aircraft is to the phi eld boundaries, the steeper the bank necessary at the turning points. The distance of the ground track from the edges of the phi eld should be the same regardless of whether the course is FL owned to the left or right. Turns should be started when the aircraft is abeam the corner of the phi eld boundaries, and the bank normally should not exceed 45 degrees. These should be the determining factors in establishing the distance from the boundaries for performing the maneuver. Although the rectangular course may be entered from any direction, this discussion assumes entry on a downwind. On the downwind leg, the wind is a tailwind and results in increased ground speed. Consequently, the turn onto the next leg is entered with a fairly fast rate of roll-in with relatively steep bank. As the turn progresses, the bank angle is reduced gradually because the tailwind component is diminishing, resulting in a decreasing ground speed. During and after the turn onto this leg, the equivalent of the base leg in a traffic sea pattern, the wind tends to drift the aircraft away from the phi eld boundary. To compensate for the drift, the amount of turn is more than 90 degrees. The rollout from this turn must be such that as the wings become level, the aircraft is turned slightly toward the phi eld and into the wind to correct for drift. The aircraft should again be the same distance from the phi eld boundary and at the same altitude as on other legs. The base leg should be continued until the upwind leg boundary is being approached. Once more, the pilot should anticipate drift and turning radius. Since drift correction was held on the base leg, it is necessary to turn less than 90 degrees to align the aircraft parallel to the upwind leg boundary. This turn should be started with a medium bank angle with a gradual reduction to a shallow bank as the turn progresses. The rollout should be timed to assure paralleling the boundary of the phi eld as the wings become level. Figure 9-5, while the aircraft is on the upwind leg, the next phi eld boundary should be observed as it is being approached to plan the turn onto the crosswind leg. Since the wind is a headwind on this leg, it reduces the aircraft's ground speed and tries to drift the aircraft toward the phi eld during the turn onto the crosswind leg. For this reason, the roll into the turn must be slow, and the bank relatively shallow to counteract this effect. As the turn progresses, the headwind component decreases, allowing the ground speed to increase. Consequently, the bank angle and rate of turn are increased gradually to assure that upon completion of the turn, the crosswind ground track continues the same distance from the edge of the phi eld. Completion of the turn with the wings level should be accomplished at a point aligned with the upwind corner of the phi eld. As the wings are rolled level, the proper drift correction is established with the aircraft turned into the wind with a change in heading of less than 90 degrees. If the turn has been made properly, the phi eld boundary will again be the same distance as it was in the previous legs. While on the crosswind leg, the wind correction angle should be adjusted as necessary to maintain a uniform distance from the phi eld boundary. As the next phi eld boundary is being approached, the pilot should plan the turn onto the downwind leg. Since a wind correction angle is being held into the wind and away from the phi eld while on the crosswind leg, this next turn requires a turn of more than 90 degrees. Since the crosswind becomes a tailwind, causing the ground speed to increase during this turn, the bank initially should be medium and progressively increased as the turn proceeds. 
To complete the turn the rollout must be timed so that the wings become level at a point aligned with the crosswind corner of the file just as the longitudinal axis of the aircraft again becomes parallel to the file boundary. The distance from the file boundary should be the same as from the other sides of the file. Usually, drift should not be encountered on the upwind or the downwind leg, but it may be difficult to fly in a situation where the wind is blowing exactly parallel to the file boundaries. This would make it necessary to use a slight wind correction. Angle on all the legs. It is important to anticipate the turns to correct for ground speed, drift, and turning radius. When the wind is behind the aircraft, the turn must be faster and steeper. When it is ahead of the aircraft, the turn must be slower and shallower. These same techniques apply while FL Ying and airport traffic see patterns. Common errors in the performance of rectangular courses are failure to adequately clear the area, failure to establish proper altitude prior to entry, typically entering the maneuver while descending, failure to establish appropriate wind correction angle, resulting in drift, gaining or losing altitude, poor coordination, typically gaining or losing airspeed during the turns, abrupt control usage. Inability to divide attention adequately between aircraft control and maintaining ground track. Improper timing in beginning and recovering from turns. Inadequate visual lookout for other aircraft. S turns across a road and S turn across a road is a practice maneuver in which the aircraft's ground track describes semicircles of equal radii on each side of a selected straight line on the ground. Reference figure 9 6 throughout this S turn across the road section. The straight line may be a road, fence, railroad or section line that lies perpendicular to the wind and should be of sufficient length for making a series of turns. A constant altitude should be maintained throughout the maneuver. S turns across a road present one of the most elementary problems in the practical application of the turn and in the correction for wind drift in turns. While the application of this maneuver is considerably less advanced in some respects than the rectangular course, it is taught after the student has been introduced to that maneuver in order that the student may have a knowledge of the correction for wind drift in straight FLI along a reference line before the student attempts to correct for drift by playing a turn. The objectives of S turns across a road are to develop the ability to compensate for drift during turns, orient the FLI path with ground references, follow an assigned ground track, arrive at specified points on assigned headings, and divide the pilot's attention. The maneuver consists of crossing the road at a 90 degrees angle and immediately beginning a series of 180 degrees turns of uniform radius in opposite directions, recrossing the road at a 90 degrees angle just as each 180 degrees turn is completed. The maneuver can be started with either a left-hand turn or a right-hand turn to go in either direction. Figure 9-6 starts the turn in a left-hand turn as an example. Accomplishing a constant radius ground track requires a changing roll rate and angle of bank to establish the wind correction angle. Both increase or decrease as the ground speed increases or decreases. The bank must be steepest when beginning the turn on the downwind side of the road and must be shallowed gradually as the turn progresses from a downwind heading to an upwind heading. On the upwind side, the turn should be started with a relatively shallow bank and then gradually steepened as the aircraft turns from an upwind heading to a downwind heading. In this maneuver, the aircraft should be rolled from one bank directly into the opposite just as the 90 degrees reference line on the ground is crossed. Before starting the maneuver, a straight ground reference line or road that lies 90 degrees to the direction of the wind should be selected, then the area checked to ensure that no obstructions or other aircraft are in the immediate vicinity. The road should be approached from the upwind side at the selected altitude on a downwind heading. When directly over the road, the Phi RST turn should be started immediately. Figure 9-6 Position 1 and figure 9-7, with the aircraft headed downwind, the ground speed is greatest and the rate of departure from the road is rapid, the roll into the steep bank must be fairly rapid to attain the proper wind correction angle. Figure 9-6, position 2, this prevents the aircraft from FL Ying too far from the road and from establishing a ground track of excessive radius. During the latter portion of the Phi RSD 90 degrees turn, when the aircraft's heading is changing from a downwind heading to a crosswind heading, the ground speed becomes less and the rate of departure from the road decreases. Figure 9-6, position 2-3 and figure 9-8, the wind correction angle is at the maximum when the aircraft is headed directly crosswind. Figure 9-6, position 3, after turning 90 degrees, the aircraft's heading becomes more and more an upwind heading, the ground speed decreases, and the rate of closure with the road becomes slower. If a constant steep bank were maintained, the aircraft would turn too quickly for the slower rate of closure and would prematurely be headed perpendicular to the road. Because of the decreasing ground speed and rate of closure while approaching the upwind heading, 
it is necessary to gradually shallow the bank during the remaining 90 degrees of the semicircle, so that the wind correction angle is removed completely, figure 99, and the wings become level as the 180 degrees turn is completed at the moment the road is reached. Figure 96, position 4, at the instant the road is being crossed at 90 degrees to it, a turn in the opposite direction should be started. Since the aircraft is still FL ying into the headwind, the ground speed is relatively low. Therefore, the turn must be started with a shallow bank to avoid an excessive rate of turn that would establish the maximum wind correction angle too soon. The degree of bank should be that which is necessary to attain the proper wind correction angle so the ground track describes an arc the same size as the one established on the downwind side. Since the aircraft is turning from an upwind to a downwind heading, the ground speed increases and after turning 90 degrees the rate of closure with the road increases rapidly. Figure 96, Position 5, Consequently, the angle of bank and rate of turn must be progressively increased so that the aircraft has turned 180 degrees at the time it reaches the road. Again, the rollout must be timed so the aircraft is in straight and level FL light directly over and perpendicular to the road. Figure 96, position 6, throughout the maneuver a constant altitude and airspeed should be maintained, and the bank should be changing constantly to affect a true semicircular ground track. Common errors in the performance of S-turns across a road are failure to adequately clear the area. Creating too small of a radius slash too high of a bank turn during the start of the maneuver. Creating bank turns too high to complete the maneuver. Poor coordination creating variations in air speeds. Gaining or losing altitude. Inability to visualize the half-circle ground track. Poor timing in beginning and recovering from turns. Faulty correction for drift. Inadequate visual lookout for other aircraft. Inability to judge closure rates to the road and adjust the bank angle so the semicircle is completed at 90 degrees to the reference road. Turns around a point turns around a point, as a training maneuver, is a logical extension of the principles involved in the performance of S-turns across a road. The objectives are to further perfect turning technique. Perfect the ability to control the aircraft subconsciously while dividing attention between the FLI path and ground references. Teach the student that the radius of a turn is a distance that is affected by the degree of bank used when turning with relation to a definite object. Develop a keen perception of altitude. Perfect the ability to correct for wind drift while in turns. In turns around a point, the aircraft is FL on in two or more complete circles of uniform radii or distance from a prominent ground reference point using a maximum bank of approximately 45 degrees while maintaining a constant altitude. The factors and principles of drift correction that are involved in S-turns are also applicable in this maneuver. As in other ground track maneuvers, a constant radius around a point requires a constantly changing angle of bank and angles of wind correction if any wind exists. The closer the aircraft is to a direct downwind heading where the ground speed is greatest, the steeper the bank and the faster the rate of turn required to establish the proper wind correction angle. The more nearly it is to a direct upwind heading where the ground speed is least, the shallower the bank and the slower the rate of turn required to establish the proper wind correction angle. Throughout the maneuver, the bank and rate of turn must be varied gradually in proportion to the ground speed. The point selected for turns around a point should be prominent, easily distinguished by the pilot, and yet small enough to present precise reference. Figures 9 to 10 through 9 to 12, isolated trees, crossroads, or other similar small landmarks are usually suitable. Right and left hand turns about a point should be practiced to develop technique in both directions. The example used here is right hand turns. To enter turns around a point, the aircraft should be FL on on a downwind heading to one side of the selected point at a distance equal to the desired radius of turn. When any significant wind exists, it will be necessary to roll into the initial bank at a rapid rate so that the steepest bank is attained a beam of the point when the aircraft is headed directly downwind. By entering the maneuver while heading directly downwind, the steepest bank can be attained immediately. Thus, if a maximum bank of 45 degrees is desired, the initial bank is 45 degrees if the aircraft is at the correct distance from the point. Thereafter, the bank is shallowed gradually until the point is reached at which the aircraft is headed directly upwind. At this point, the bank should be gradually steepened until the steepest bank is again attained when heading downwind at the initial point of entry. Just as S-turns require that the aircraft be turned into the wind in addition to varying the bank, so do turns around a point. During the downwind half of the circle, the aircraft's nose is progressively turned toward the inside of the circle. During the upwind half, the nose is progressively turned toward the outside. The downwind half of the turn around the point may be compared to the downwind side of the S-turn across a road. The upwind half of the turn around a point may be compared to the upwind side of the S-turn across a road.
as the pilot becomes experienced in performing turns around a point and has a good understanding of the effects of wind drift and varying the bank angle and wind correction angle as required, entry into the maneuver may be from any point. When entering the maneuver at a point other than downwind, however, the radius of the turn should be carefully selected. Be sure to take into account the wind velocity and ground speed so that an excessive bank is not required later on to maintain the proper ground track. The FLI instructor should place particular emphasis on the effect of an incorrect initial bank. Common errors in the performance of turns around a point are failure to clear the area adequately, failure to establish appropriate bank on entry, failure to recognize wind drift, inadequate bank angle and or inadequate wind correction angle on the downwind portion of the circle, resulting in drift away from the reference point, excessive bank and or inadequate wind correction angle on the upwind side of the circle, resulting in drift towards the reference point, gaining or losing altitude, inability to maintain a constant airspeed, inadequate visual lookout for other aircraft, inability to direct attention outside the aircraft while maintaining precise aircraft control. Chapter Summary Ground Reference Maneuvers and Related Factors are used in developing a high degree of pilot skill in analyzing the effect of wind and other forces acting on the aircraft for accurate and safe maneuvering of the aircraft. The specific C maneuvers are rectangular course, S turns across a road, and turns about a point. These are training maneuvers that should be mastered to within the tolerances in the PTS.